Welcome to Red, White, and Blue. I'm Gary Polland, and this is Dallas Jones, our new co-host. Welcome, Dallas. Thank you, Gary. Tell uh, our, our viewers a little bit about yourself. Sure. I uh, am the owner of a public and government affairs firm, uh, political consultant by trade, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm here co-hosting with you. Well, I'm looking forward to the next years together. Absolutely. This week, we're going to talk about the fall elections, Dallas. It's a very exciting time. It uh, is. We always seem to be rolling into an election cycle, but this is the first city election cycle in four years. Absolutely. So uh, a lot of pent-up demand for people to want to run. So we're going to talk about city of Houston elections. We're going to talk about Metro and their bond issue. We're going to talk about uh, special election for Jessica Farrar's seat and uh, city council control and what other thing we have time on our show today. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. let me introduce the guests. First, Gilbert Garcia, managing partner of Garcia, Hamilton & Associates, which is an investment banking firm. We are a money management firm. We manage about 15 billion in bonds. Wow. Okay. He's a good guy to know, uh, <laughs> Marcus. Uh, for, and Marcus Davis, owner of The Breakfast Club, which I, I will say every time I drive by your place, and I've been there before a couple of times, once yeah. for your show, once to eat, uh, there's a line out the door. Sometimes. Is, well, no, it's like every time I come out by. and around. He also hosts uh, the Fish, Grits, and Politics. So yes, welcome to both of you today. Thank you. And Thank you. I'm going to let you go with the first question. Okay. <laughs> Who's going to be the next mayor? Uh, well, I, I can tell you. Go ahead. Tell us. The next mayor is going to be Tony Busby. And why is that? Well, first of all, I've got to uh, disclose a conflict, which is I am his treasurer. Okay. Uh, but the main reason is... There'll be a lot of that disclosing I, that. I, I understand. <laughs> the main reason is people are just tired. Every time you open the newspaper, there's something. Whether it's an airport issue, with money being spent with nothing to show for it, whether it's the firefighters, part one, part two, this mediation, that mediation, whether it's the trash isn't being recycled, but they said it was only one truck, and then now it's hundreds of trucks and thousands of tons. I mean, I could go on and on. At the end of the day, people are tired of it. They don't want to see his partner get another contract and it's time for change. And I think it's already shaping up to be a two-man race, and I think it's gonna be a Tony Busby, Mayor Turner runoff, and I see Busby as our new mayor. All right, Marcus. Uh, I think the new mayor is going to be who the people elect to become mayor, <laughs> and they'll make that choice. You, you know, uh, you made some good points about what people are tired of. Maybe they're tired of it being inundated with this stuff day in and day out. I. Um, you know, nothing's perfect, but I think our city has made great strides. You know, here we are in the midst of hurricane season, and we forget so quickly that uh, we have survived past uh, Harvey, and we are moving into an, a, a new direction. And I'm just stating the the the, the truth, not a not an advocate for any any campaign. But the reality of it is that our city is not in the financial. Uh, dire straits that it could have and would have been had it not been corrected. Our city is not uh, has recovered from Hurricane Harvey, amongst a, a number of other things. I, I, I recall uh, when Mayor Parker was mayor and and Ron Green was the controller. I recall getting a a report from uh, Moody, and you're familiar with Moody, mm -hmm. the rating system, and they said point blank, if the city of Houston, it said the city of Houston's health is fine financially. But if the city of Houston does not do something about the uh, the tax, the the um, the uh, cap, and finding an additional revenues, it'll have a problem with the looming pension. And that was recommended under Parker. It was known under White. And here we are moving into 2019, where we have, you know, quite frankly, addressed the issue. And as a businessman in the city, I'm excited about the health of the economy of the city. Do we have a ways to go? I say yes. Uh, are we in a g better place than we would have been? I would have to say yes. Well, well the what? answer could it be worse, Marcus. Uh, how about driving on our roads? We have the worst roads in America. There's like, we're like a third world country. <laughs> They've stolen the money from the uh, drainage fee that was supposed to go for our roads and for drainage. We have all this money that's supposedly coming in to help people who had yeah. to deal with Harvey and there was a disaster, and the only people who have made money are the insiders who lined their pockets. Well, what, yeah. I think six million then, they found then, then, then I think we need, no, I think wait, we need wait, to wait, go wait. get the guys from the previous administrations that did that yeah, drainage thing. We can't bring that into 2019. We've got to talk about when the drainage uh, tax was put in place and who was, you know, well, taking the, the money. Well, the plan was great, and then they took the money. But yeah, my, question to you, my question to you, Gary, is, 
who is they? Who stole the money? <laughs> oh, although that, well, that money, that money, the, the drainage money was diverted to be used to pay the other bills for the city. And that was done and by all of our council members. I agree. Members. And all I agree. And, 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 and they're and all wrong. And, that, and, and that's the thing. Wrong. That's the thing that we miss. You know, it, you know, and that's we, why I we, we talk. We talk a lot <laughs> about the mayor. What we miss is that we don't have council members who are saying the opposite. Because of, they have no power. Well, that's oh, one of the reasons. That doesn't mean you get. You have yeah. the power of your constituency. You have the power of the microphone. Well, yeah, I, I don't would, say anything. I'm going to go back to one thing on the Harvey because, you know, here we are, it's been, I think, two years, and the mayor had a town hall the other day, and at the end of the day, you would have thought a town hall would have happened after the flood. It's taken two years to have a town hall, and I'll speak on behalf of all the people who are still not living in their home, like my brother just moved into his house. At the end of the day, it's... And that's Houston's fault. Uh, well, I think the absolute, <laughs> yes, of course it is. I'm just, yes. I'm just asking. The mayor is in the CEO of this city, and it is the mayor's responsibility to do what it takes to get the city rebounding, whether it is to go knock on doors in Austin, Washington, and bang on the doors. And my view is someone should have had a town hall meeting two years ago and should have gotten a war room ready to say, we've got to get funds and we got to make it happen now. It's just been sort of a lackadaisical attitude. And for those people who flooded not in their home, they're all frustrated, they're not getting their phone calls returned, and they're not seeing any support. Yeah, it, it's, it's a big problem. And, and the, the fact is the mayor's law partner got a six and a half million dollar contract for outreach, and they've outreached like 10 people. I mean, it's just, a, it, it, the whole thing, yeah. it's almost like you said, it's the politicians who've been taking care of themselves, and the people are getting not much. I, I have a That's question. That's my take. You, yeah. you mentioned, you mentioned <coughs> the two-man race. How did, how did Bill White get uh, exited out of Bill the, King. I mean, Bill King. No, we're gonna, sorry, well, actually, well, we can get to that. <laughs> sure. I wanna, I, actually, I wanna, I, I'd yeah. like to take a step back and talk, throw a name out there and discuss, right? Okay. So let's start. We got, uh, we already talked about Turner, we talked about Busby. So Bill King, runner up in 2015, right. lost by 3,000 votes, mm -hmm. primarily out of Fort Bend County. Right. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, it was a, ran a tough race. This time, doesn't look like he's as well financed. That's right. my only right. thing that I well, say. He only Lots showed, of ideas. He only showed, yeah. I've got a little cheat sheet here. Don't he only showed $318,000 on hand at the end right. of and July. And if I'm not mistaken, 200000 was a loan. It's not, my cheat sheet is not that in <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm pretty not. sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, look, Bill King knows city issues very well. He had his time, he had his chance. At the end of the day, he hasn't gotten any traction. Uh, he's not drawn any crowds. He doesn't have the finances and resources. I mean, it's really become a clear-cut two-person race because, right. um, you know, we only have, what, 60 days, 70 days. The amount of enthusiasm, resources, and things required at this stage, there's really only two candidates that have them, and one is the mayor and the other is Tony Busby. But you have Dwight Boykins, a uh, city councilman, uh, well-regarded on council, and got the endorsement of the Houston Fire mm -hmm. Department Union. That's a big deal. So no where doubt. does he fit? Uh, president of the firefighters. <laughs> Mayor of the firefighters. Okay. That's where he fits. So you don't think that gets him to the runoff? I, I think the city is, and, I, and of course, I love all of our men and women that put their lives on the, uh, on, on the line on a daily basis, both fire and police. Um, but the city of Houston has a greater constituency than just one body. Our budget, our city budget, has a, more components than just one body. I think when you start talking about city workers, the sanitation workers need as much justice as the, the, the firefighters and the police departments and yeah, police department and uh, public works and all of that good stuff. So you, you, you have to, you, and from a political standpoint, no, you can't, you can't win a race uh, just by uh, having one body of people supporting. Yeah. And I will tell you, look, Dwight Boyd, I think if he had entered the race sooner, I think he would have been, had a bigger impact. I think he just got in too late. Um, and so the, the resources aren't there, and so that's why it's really bubbling to just a two-person race. As it relates to the firefighters, you know, one of the things that's very frustrating to me is, remember, whether you believe the firefighters deserve pay parity or not, the bottom line is the voters spoke, and more people voted for pay parity than even voted for the mayor themselves. And instead of abiding by the will of the voters, which as a former Metro chairman, that's always what I was taught to do, he's been fighting it, he's been suing it, taking to court, mediation after mediation. At the end of the day, the voters have spoke, we should solve it and move on to other issues of the city. So, so, so are you saying you go with the will of the voters even when it's unconstitutional? That, I mean, that, that's, when, when, it, when it's, you're a lawyer. You, you, I'm you're not, right. but, but how is no, it No, you're not, you're right, you're right. But, <laughs> but you, you, you're, you're right, you're right. 
I'm, I'm getting that. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> but, but, but the question is, if, if it is illegal, if the judge ruled it illegal, he talks like a lawyer. He always gives me <laughs> lawyerly advice. All right. Because right? he talks fast. Yeah, because he talks fast. He's smart. But, 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 but here, here's the question. If the judge ruled that this was not uh, legal, then how, what do you, you, you take the will yeah. of the people over, over the rule of law? Well, remember, that was the second judge that came in, and judge just got elected, so those things sort of changed. At the end it's of the still day, still a judge uh, presiding and, and, and making a ruling. Do you go with the will of judge. the people over the rule of law? No, the will of the people, if we had no, I mean, put it this way, the only reason why the mayor challenged it is because he lost in the election, right? That's the only reason, because if he had thought that somehow this was not appropriate or whatever, no one spoke up back then. We know more people supported pay parity for the firefighters than even elected the mayor himself. I, I'm going to take, and I'm gonna take issue with that. I think he should come forward now, and do the right thing. I, I'm going to take issue with that Please because it wasn't, it wasn't the mayor's administration's responsibility to challenge it before. That proposition was brought forth by the firefighters, so the due diligence was well, their responsibility. And the idea that the due diligence wasn't done for you to know what is legal and what's not legal, you can't put that on I the administration. But one thing we can agree <laughs> on, the, the fire union members are not gonna support Sylvester Turner. So, yeah. That is correct. And, but let me say this, there, no there, there is rumor, that since we're, we're talking about the fire union and you're talking, I think you're on Boykins on your list, right? Yeah, then we're going to. Um, you know, there is rumor that they're, they are going to spend about a million dollars in an independent expenditure. Does that have an impact? You mean the firefighters or somebody on behalf of Boykins? Right. Certainly does. But mm. at the end of the day, uh, he jumped in too late. Uh, and, you know, Mayor Turner is going to probably spend five times that. Uh, Tony right. Busby's... Tried to put a garbage tax on us. Yeah, uh, Tony Busby has already said he's going to spend ten times that. So in other words, in the scheme of things, a million dollars is significant, but it won't be significant enough. As of July 31, Busby had $5.1 million on hand. That's almost two million more than the mayor. That's correct. Um, how much of this was raised by donors? None. He's completely self-financing his whole campaign. And that's what's so important and that's special. That's scary. Well, I see, I see the exact opposite. I, I've, I've seen this story before and it happened okay. a couple of years ago. Well, you can reiterate or, or go deeper than that in one second if you just allow me, which is, no, the whole point is, is no one can buy Tony Busby. There will be no outside influence that's going to put any pressure on him for any contract for anything. He's going to call it like, it like he sees it. And I think that is so refreshing. So he said, I'm going to come in. I care about the city. The city's been good to me. I'm running for mayor. I'm going to give it my all. And the proof is in the pudding. It, it, he, he's, well, I'll be real fast. No, go ahead, go he's self-made, right? He came from very modest backgrounds. Marine Corps did two tours and put Persian Gulf, right? I mean, this is the real deal. I'm sorry. I mean, and that's a great story. And I don't, I don't know Mr. Really Mr. 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 Yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 I, that's a great story. And I don't know Mr. Buzzley personally, but I don't know. He hasn't I, been to your restaurant. I, I, I don't. He I, needs to come by. Well, I mean, maybe his treasurer or campaign maybe manager should, to tell <laughs> <laughs> should tell him where the people are, I, I the other people that haven't been touched. Right. So, sure. but he, he, here's the thing. Good idea. Um, I don't know that those things. Uh, bring more weight to the table for being the mayor of the city. I celebrate our soldiers and the work that they've done and all that, but that, it's a great story. It's a great campaign story, but I don't know that it makes for a great mayor. Now, I, I get what you're saying about not being bought, and that is a problem in uh, American political systems that people can be bought. But the scary part about what, what you're describing is it, he may not be able to be bought, and again, I don't know Mr. Busby personally, but the, this sounds like uh, the, the, the idea of being able to buy the election. So it's a, it, it may be refreshing that he can't, that a person can't be bought, but it's also scary that a person can buy an election. That's, well, that, that's frightening. Well, I, I, I think, I see your point. I think what's more frightening is city halls for sale uh, and the mayor's offices for sale. I think that's more frightening because the only people who are getting contracts are those who are making contributions to the mayor. And I, I think, think there's... That could th just be a coincidence. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's a coincidence. <laughs> At the end of the day... Here's, here's a question. How much different does... does what's happening proportionally to people getting contracts that people know. How much different does it look today than it looked under Parker, than it looked under White, does it, than it looked under... Uh, um, sure. Um, well, well, right. well, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, those, those, those are real questions. And I'm not saying yeah. that, that, that any part of it is acceptable, but if we're not being honest and diligent in exploring, okay, we, we had two mayors in the last uh, eight, ten years, what did their contract uh, for their buddies, for their 
former partners? What did that look like? If we've done that due diligence, I'm okay with the comparison. But if we haven't done that, and I think it's unfair. Well, Anise Parker had no partners, right? Because she, you know, was a controller's office, and you know, so there wasn't a situation where to get busy you had to hire her law partner. Um, th there wasn't a situation we had certain lobbyists with 20, 22 contracts that did not happen, and those are all facts. But going back, I think what I thought I heard you say is. Boy, I wish Tony Busby had run for office many times ago, so the city hall would have not been for sale all this time. So it, I'm going. I'm going to go back to the council members. If all of this is what, what you guys are saying is true, number one, where's the FBI? If all of this is true, where's the where's the state, the federal government? If all of this is true, where are the council members? So are you yeah. saying that this they're, is they're, the they, council are, members are, are like we, puppy dogs waiting for their treat from the mayor because we have a strong mayor's form of government. You know, look, I, here's the problem. I've heard it. Here's yeah, how I describe it. Go ahead. You know, there's if you look at major cities in America, there is graft and corruption everywhere. That's it's not uncommon. Okay? But at least like you go back to Chicago, Mayor Daly, they got a piece of everything, him and his clan, right? Okay? But at least they spend most of the money on the projects they're supposed to. I don't think that's happening here. Look, I'm gonna I think that I think that I I, I mean I'm very disappointed in Sylvester. I think Sylvester mm -hmm. is a bright guy, politically experienced, smart, understood understood what needed to be done, and comes in and just isn't performing at the level you'd expect. Given his old, former law partner six and a half million, signing a company that got thrown out of Louisiana for corruption, Louisiana, thirty three million dollars, and they haven't done nothing. I mean, if if Harvey showed up tomorrow, guess what the result would be? The same. Exactly. You know, so, you know what, I have a lot. And that's where, it, that's leadership. I have a lot I could say to that, but I'm not. I'm going to be the responsible one <laughs> at the table and remind right, you we all. Have, we have about nine minutes and a whole oh, ballot, oh, oh, and a whole ballot oh, oh, to get there. Right, okay. sorry, well, sorry, one more, I I, 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 But I do have to ask about the council members that sit around the table and vote on these things. And and we're about to talk yeah. about them right now. Your point is well taken, because council members should be stepping up. They should be more, yeah, they should be more aggressive on behalf of the citizens to look after the citizens, there's no, no. doubt. Uh, maybe okay. they don't agree. Maybe they Sue Lovell. Sue Lovell, that's the, I think that's the last major candidate yep. who's going to get us some you know, sizable uh, votes. Again. Former councilwoman, strong in the LGBT community, uh, which she lost the endorsement because Turner bought 100 and 200 right. more memberships and, and took it away from her. The executive committee did not want to endorse, but they were overwhelmed by the new members that Sylvester Turner That will probably recruited. never attend a meeting again. Well, uh, well, well probably not, but at the okay. end of the day. <laughs> so uh, Sue. It, Again, smart, in too late, no resources. I mean, you know, I think the great thing about someone like her in the race is she'll bring up some very valid issues that should be debated and should be brought to the table. But at the end of the day, as it relates to viability, I mean, you know, she's in too late and doesn't have the resources. Okay. So. Well, he said. Okay, then we got controller. Okay, controller. You, yes, <laughs> yes. You have a, you have a favorite there. Uh, well, yes. I, 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 let me disclose, much like you, that the city controller is a client of my firm. That's okay. Um, and he's running and, against Orlando and Sanchez. And so it's clear who I believe is going to win. And Chris has been a guest on the show a number of yes, times. Yes, he has. He has been on the show. Uh, my my criticism of Chris, and I've said it to his face, so it's not unusual, is he's been too silent mm -hmm. on the controller's role of calling out things that shouldn't be happening in the city. And my re response to that was that would be that he has audited several departments. Um, he, he's he's done a job. He's done a good job. The city is is. Um, we just talked about how we're no longer in the fiscal mess that we were in. And I think you can't you can't take away the fact that the controller has has done what he's needed to do. I mean, it's not a sexy role, but it is. Um, and I think he deserves to be reelected. Yeah, but yeah. again, I, 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 I've disclosed no, where I, I'm coming from. Let's hear from my yeah, guests. I mean, what do look, you think? Look, I think Chris has done a good job. He could be much more aggressive, in my view, uh, speaking out uh, and highlighting things more clearly. You know, we're not out of the woods financially, so I'm not sure the financial statements you're looking at. But at the end of the day, we still have many challenges ahead of ourselves. But I think he's done a good job. I think he's going to win. I think he's popular. I think he's out in the community. And I think his main opponent that just, you know just jumped in at the last minute. Uh, and so I see Chris actually winning uh, pretty comfortably. So you believe Chris has done a good job? No, I think that Chris could do a much better. Well, no, let me take that back. He's capable. Let me take let me take that back. Yes, he's done a good job, but he could do a much better job. I, if I were controller, I would use that to be a much more aggressive voice. Is that an announcement? Uh, well, <laughs> did, I, did I miss the deadline? I may have missed the deadline. But, right. but, but, but here, here's a question. Here's a question, Please right? Do. 
why all of the things that we're talking about, why hasn't the controller brought these things to light? I mean, this is the person. That's right. That, You're right. That's right. exactly that's so, what, right. That's so, what I'm saying. But, but from from reading what he has written, what he sub submitted, he doesn't agree with what you guys are, 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 are you know, putting out. Uh, here, here's the biggest one. Here's the biggest one, right? If you, if you believe the controller uh, has weighed and has done a decent job, the controller is, was the one that told us that the firefighters deal was a bad deal. He said it. That came out of the controller's mouth. He wrote it. He and put it out. the voters said we don't care. I, I understand yeah. that, but the, these are the people that the vote, this is the person that the voters but he voted in to watch the tax dollars. Here. My model for a good controller was Anise Parker. Anise Parker, when she was controller, yep. criticized Bill White when she thought he was wrong and wasn't afraid to do it. Chris, not done. Right. Well, That's it's been noted. That it's been noted the the the, the public spats between Chris Brown and, and Mayor Turner. So well, to say that he's just been a a, a check off for the mayor, I, I think is a bit unfair. I think, uh, well, I think it looks that way. Okay. Yeah. Key city council races. Since we're down to five minutes. Okay. So I talk about open seats. You got District A, Stardig retiring. District B, District C, Ellen Cohen retiring. Or did she retire two or three years ago? She's term limited. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, I haven't heard from her in four years uh, as mayor pro tem. District D, District F, uh, District J. I'm partial here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, this, it's, it's some of these races, you just have so many yes. people running. It's, uh, you know, I, I think as a citizen and as a voter, it's hard to really, you know, navigate the different issues and the different things. And to some extent, I think people are just going to wait to see how the runoff shakes out, or, and that's or, when they'll come together. So, what should people look for? Campaigning. What should money? they look for? Well, how about who's raising money? Okay. I, I mean, and and, and I've, uh, well, that's not again, necessarily good either. Yeah, is I, it? Cr yeah. I cringe at. at yeah. there, there are two things in the process that I cringe at. Right when we, as soon as we announce a candidate's name, we go and say, look and see oh, how much, how much money they have. have. And right. then the other thing is we look at the endorsements. And as you alluded to earlier, these endorsement things can be finagled when you look at these right. caucuses where you can buy a mm -hmm. ticket and buy right. enough memberships and and it happens on I, on both sides oh, up sure. and down the ballot and so I think what people to your question I think what people should be looking for is leadership people of great character yeah. and integrity and and I, I hear this t term we have a strong mayoral form of government but we don't have a stronger mayoral form of government than the people they're more uh, city council members than there are mayors and the just quite simply the vote is the vote and if council members decide that they want to vote a certain way no matter how strong the mayor is he can't he, he can't so you pass it. But candidates the, are going to speak out. But the mayor controls see, the agenda of council control, and that's the power of Controlling it. the agenda is important. That's the power. Because but the if vote you, at the end of the day is still leverage. If you don't no. if, you, if you put stuff up that we don't want that we want we're going to vote no on if you don't put our stuff on the agenda. Well the key is a council Person, if they want an issue that that's important to mm -hmm. them, they got to some extent cater to the bear, or they're not going to get their Arcade, item on the agenda. Or cater to the rest All of right, their so colleagues. All right, saying to empower the council, they should be able to put things on the agenda. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, how many council members are there? Sixteen. How many mayors are there? One. 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 I, instead of catering to the mayor, go and get nine votes. If you Understood. want, if you as a council member want your stuff passed. Go and get nine votes, and well, you hold on to those nine and say we want these items on the agenda, or else we're not going to vote for the things that are put on the agenda. Well, I'll tell you something very novel. They they, I, they can hire me for you know political strategy if they there want. You go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll tell you, I know we're running out of time. Here's something very novel. Just vol just voluntarily do the right thing. Yeah. Just do the right thing. So what do I mean by that? I, well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's that's good. So what do so voters? Me, so how do voters sort through all yeah. these? Myriad of names. And, and, and should and endorsements I just say and money thing. be a litmus well, for how for sure. a candidate's leadership? When, when I was, it shouldn't be for the leadership. It, it, it is it is it Sorry, yeah, should yeah, it be is. counted? Yes. Does it have some weight? But it shouldn't be the start and the end of the race. When I was chairman of Metro, ah, any board <laughs> any board member, if they wanted something on the agenda, I put it on. Period. All right. And there's nothing wrong with that. As it goes back to money, I know we have a minute or two, as it goes back to money, there's a difference between being a district council person race, where it's much more concentrated right. and you can really knock on lots of doors, and running at large. When it comes to at large, you know, regrettably, to get your name out, whether it's signs, well, media, it, it takes a lot of money. resources. And without the money, you really don't have right. a chance. I, I'll, I'll, All right, I will say, yes, speaking sir. of resources. Metro is asking for three, authorization to issue three and a half billion dollars in bonds, I guess, for more trains and bus lanes through the Galleria and, and, and on the West Loop. Uh, so 
Is this a good idea? Is this well thought out? Or for our people? viewers, that's billion with a B. Yeah, I'm going to surprise <laughs> everybody because I love Metro. I was chairman of Metro, and I won't go into all the great things that we did, but we did a bunch. <laughs> I can tell you right now, it's outrageous. Why? It is outrageous to say to the voters, we're going to borrow $3.5 billion when, number one, they can't afford the debt service. And everybody knows that. Tax increase. Yeah. Number two, what are you going to spend the money on? I want to know the priorities. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Trust us. Trust us on three and a half billion. I'm sorry, guys. I love Metro. And at the end of the day, when you look at their plan, there's a lot of things in there totally unnecessary. Taking two different lines, light rail to the airport. If you look nationally, uh, airport service is not does not get ridership it's not successful at one time we had a rapid bus to the airport couldn't get any riders and i hated it when they took it away yeah. and i blamed you, well, you for can't that, blame me on that. <laughs> well, so marcus was the I, only customer yeah. i rode that bus regularly <laughs> it was, it was great. <laughs> all right is, is, there, is there organized opposition to the metro plan? no and i think Will that it the, it's going to pass and i think at the end of the day that's probably why the mayor put it on there and i think that's one of the reasons why there's strategically certain things on Five there seconds. because he wants to get Gen out certain communities to vote. <laughs> Time is up. I'm sorry. Y'all, look, uh, uh, Marcus and Gilbert, y'all are great. Yeah, you're, you're Boy, did it all pass. 30 you, minutes past. 30 minutes past. We Man. will be back next week with another exciting edition of Red, White, and Blue.